The fundamental theorem of algebra. And you're thinking, how has it taken me this long to learn the fundamental theorem of algebra? Um, but this is what the fundamental theorem is. Basically, from an equation, from the degree. Remember, we called the degree the highest power x was raised to. How many solutions or zeros will a function have? Well, from the degree, you can tell. For example, a linear function has degree 1, and it has one solution, 2x minus 5 equal to 0. Or, in the same way, y equals 2x minus 5 has one x-intercept. A quadratic, degree 2, x squared minus 5x plus 17. Now, degree 2, degree 1, double zeros count twice. Imaginary or complex solutions count too. So all of that goes into the degree and saying how many solutions a function will have. So for example, this x cubed minus 7x plus 6, the graph looks like this. It has three solutions. What are the roots? So it sure looks like from the graph that they are negative 3, positive 1, and 2. And so we can verify that they are roots algebraically. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug negative 3 in, f of negative 3. And I'm going to do, well, negative 3 cubed minus 7 times negative 3 plus 6. So that's negative 27 plus 21 plus 6 equals 0. So negative 3 verified f of 1. 1 cubed minus 7 times 1 plus 6. 1 minus 7 plus 6, negative 6 plus 6, 0. Verified. f of 2. Um, 2 cubed minus 7 times 2 plus 6. You guys get the idea. 8 minus 14 plus 6 is 0. Um, also, some questions will ask us to write functions in factored form, and we've really done this before. So if negative 3 is a root, x plus 3 is a factor, and x minus 1 is a factor, and x minus 2 is a factor. And so we've done something like that before. Finally, we're going to be using our calculators to help us out with finding the real roots so that we can find the complex roots as well. And so, how do we use our calculator? Well, so I've got my x cubed minus 7x in here. I'm going to get our standard zoom. And again, what we do, we've done this before, where you find your roots. If we want to find our zero on our calculator, I want to find this. I'm going to tell the calculator, look to the left, look to the right, and you will find the zero in between. This is left bound and right bound. So plug it into y equals, and then hit second calc, which is the trace button, and zero. So you want to, you want to do left bound. So second and the trace button and zero. Hit enter or number two. And I'm going to find the one off to the left here. So this is where it is. I'm going to tell the calculator, well, look to the left. Hit enter. Look to the right. Hit enter. And then it says guess. You can just hit enter again. And so we get negative three zero. You can also find the other ones that way as well, all of them. This will be a great method to check our answers with. So. Our next one, x to the fourth. So, degree four. 
So we see two real roots. It crosses twice. So that must mean... Well, this must mean two imaginary roots. Because... And now this isn't always the case. It's just that it might go left and right from here, except if it crossed again. Either way, it might cross over here and then go back up. But you never know. But it's probably going to be too imaginary, unless we change our window to be doubly sure. So, our zeros look like negative 1 and 3. So we're going to use these roots. And we're, to do this, to make it smaller, we're going to use synthetic division. And this is why we practiced this so much the other day, because this is really how it um, comes into play here. So, I'm going to check the negative 1 first. I'm going to use 1, negative 2, negative 16, and negative 15. And remember that we were changing the sign. If x plus 1 is what we're dividing by, we would put negative 1 in here. Well, negative 1 is the root, and so that's why we're putting negative 1 in here. We're not changing the sign this time. So what we're in a sense doing is dividing by x plus 1, and what it's going to do is, because we know negative 1 is a root, or we think it is, it'll make it smaller. So we drop down the 1. 1 times negative 1, add negative 3, multiply, you get Hmm. Sorry. This isn't working out. One times negative one. Negative 1, negative 3, positive 3, that's negative 13. So what did I do wrong here? Hmm. Oh, we don't have a cube term. I forgot to put the zero in there. Number one rule. So, we put a zero in there. No cube term. So we need a zero placeholder. So we have a zero, uh, and then the negative two, then the negative 16, then the negative 15. And so, in other words, I knew I needed to get a zero, because when you plug in negative one, you get zero. And so I knew I needed to get a remainder of zero. Negative one, positive one, negative one, positive one, negative 15, positive 15, and you get zero. Voila. All right, so next part, we are going to continue synthetic division. And I'm going to ignore this. Basically, I'm going to start all over again and say, well, let's say it's 3. So after I divided by x plus 1, now I have gone from degree 4 to degree 3. And after I do this again, I'm going to drop down the 1. I'm going to have degree 2. 1 times 3 is 3. I add these two. I get 2. 2 times 3 is 6. I add, I get 5. And 5 times 3 is 15. I add, I get 0. If, in fact, these two are going exactly through these, I should always get remainder zeros. Now, this is telling me x squared plus 2x plus 5. So, if I set the rest of this equal to 0, I can solve it. Now, we already know that we're going to get too imaginary because it doesn't cross anymore, and so I'm going to go straight to quadratic formula which is the negative b plus or minus square root b 
b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So negative 2 plus or minus 2 squared minus 4 times 1 times 5, 2 times 1. So we already know we're going to get a square root of a negative, 4 minus 20, negative 16. which is 4i, square root of 16 is 4, square root of the negative gives us the i, over 2, so you get negative 1 plus or minus 2i, because 2 divided by 2, 4 divided by 2. So those are our other two answers. So, in factored form, two ways we can do this. Sometimes they say all the pretty factors, all the real factors, x plus 1, x minus 3, and x squared plus 2x plus 5, but we could also use these um, and sorry, negative 1 plus 2i and negative 1 and 3 and negative 1 plus or minus 2i. Those are our 1, 2, 3, 4 roots because it's plus and minus, so those count as 2. We have x minus a negative 1 plus or minus 2i. And so it's really going to be 1x plus that, right? And x plus 1 minus. 2i. And that's what it'll look like. So, you see both of those sometimes. So this is going back to our original, our x cubed minus 7x plus 6. Sketch the table of the equation. Well, so if I go back and I have my x cubed minus 7x plus 6 in here. I have a table. And there it is. See how our table of our x's and y's, negative 4, negative 30, negative 3, 0, negative 2, 12, negative 1, 12, 0, 6, 1, 0, 2, 0. So, those are zeros. Anytime the y value is equal to 0. So this table can give us the roots. Negative 3, 1, and 2. And those can only give us the real roots because it only applies, puts real numbers in here. But the nice part about this is if you plugged in negative 1 plus 2i in the last problem, you can check it that way. So let's try another one of these. Sorry, we already identified the roots, verified the roots with the graph because we already graphed that function at the beginning. Those identify with this, negative 3, 1, and 2. Alright, given this last function,